Welcome back, welcome back. It's about that time of day again, folks. 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Happy Quadruple Witching Friday to you. Quadruple what? Well, we'll talk about that in just a couple seconds. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome to your crude oil squawk. This is your crude oil trading strategy. We're going from the screen here in Los Angeles all the way to the trading floor on the NYMEX exchange this morning. A very unique and very powerful way to begin your morning every morning. My name is Joseph James. I'm a, I'm a lonely old day trader. I run a trade room every morning at schooloftrade.com. Come out and see me every morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Time, and I'd be happy to walk you through everything I'm talking about here this morning. My job today is pretty simple. My job is to provide you with a technical approach to these, this crazy market we call crude oil futures. I'm going to start with a, a weekly chart, a daily chart, all the way down to the overnight five-minute charts, and we're going to use a top-down approach. We're going to start with the slowest time frames, see what's been happening the past few days, the past few weeks, and then we're going to end up analyzing overnight, anticipating the direction at the open, which may be difficult today with OPEX and Quadruple Witching Friday. And we're looking for those high percentage trading opportunities this morning starting at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. So I'm a technical analyst. I'm looking at charts. Uh, I do not have the luxury uh, during the day that uh, a lot of new traders have, which is having some sort of uh, pit analysis. And that's why we have Mr. Marty Erico here with us. This is a very, very powerful way of preparing for your day because while I'm going to tell you what's happening on the charts, I'm then going to ask Marty Erico from Traders Audio. Marty and his partner Jeffrey, they've got a great, they have a great broadcast every morning starting out at 8.50 a.m. 8.50 a.m. Eastern Time. Go check them out at Traders Audio. And, of course, the pit analysis we're going to be looking at this morning, we'll be analyzing market direction, right, multiple market divergence, okay, comparing the uh, crude oil, the Arbob heating oil, and, of course, Brent crude. We know that market internals are important. We're going to look at some of the important option prices, and then very, very important, we'll finish up this morning by looking over your pit session trading levels. And it's going to be always interesting to see if Marty's levels match up with my levels, right? Who's going to be the one with the magic levels this morning? Will it be the, will it be the analyst on, on, the, on the charts or will it be the analyst on the floor? We'll see what happens. So before I, before I go too long here, let's jump right into some charts and let's get the day started. Once again, starting with a daily chart here, we're going to go top down. And the first thing I want to look at is, whoa, big gap overnight. We can see this huge, I'm sorry, excuse me, uh, not a gap overnight uh, today, but gap overnight two days ago. And now here we are after pushing lower. You can see here this price wedge when I zoom out a little bit. We've now collapsed all the way back into that wedge. Now, if you're following along at home, kids, if you rewind the tape and go back a few days, you remember me, me describing how we treat a price wedge. And a price wedge is never broken until we break those swing highs that make up the wedge. We always know we're susceptible to that price going up and then collapsing. That's exactly what's happened. So we knew this morning, we come in this morning, price has tumbled off those highs, almost just as expected. Now, at the beginning of the week, we had all the bulls in control. In fact, if you watch the recordings from the beginning of this week, you've, you've probably heard me say, there's no way we're going to hit that, we're not going to hit that 100 level, right? So why was I wrong? Well, because remember, What's the diff what, what is the only thing that can affect the technicals? The technicals are, in my humble opinion, the leading indicator of everything, right? The technicals lead to the fundamentals, in my humble opinion, all right? You may disagree with that. But we see here, though, the technical pattern told us that we should have at least tested that 100, at least tested that 99.66. What happened? Something fundamental stepped in the way. A news release, a political statement. Uh, a natural disaster, right? Something, something happened outside of our, of our anticipation. Something happened outside of our control. An outside influence crept in and said, nope. Mr. Ben Bernanke came on the microphone on Wednesday and said, we're going to be withdrawing stimulus from the market, right? We saw, we saw the reaction to that Fed report, not Wednesday night, but Thursday morning. And so we know that technically speaking, we saw bulls in charge early this week. But now by the end of the week, look at how much has changed. My, what a few days can do. 
it really, really shows just how important it is to have both technical clues and also be aware of the fundamentals behind it. Now, you'll notice we're sitting here at 95.43. Just like I said yesterday morning, we are at a really pivotal part right now. As you can see, if we keep going higher, this would make all the sense in the world now to put together an A, B, C, D up to that symmetry sell zone. So it makes all the sense in the world here that we will still see higher prices in the long term. However, if we slip and fall, oh baby, are we in trouble. That 92 even area is screaming at us. You can see we've got a buy zone waiting there for it. 9188, 9187, 92 big round number. You know it's just begging those sellers to get on their horse and ride all the way down. So we know this morning that we've got one of two scenarios. We know we've got 95.43. It's going to bounce here. I do expect to see rising prices here. Big drops usually mean big pops. This morning is also quadruple witching Friday, which means anybody with experience is either firing up the boat, the barbecue, right, grabbing the golf clubs, or trading extremely lightly this morning. The only traders that are participating on a quadruple witching Friday, any, I should say, larger size traders, speculators like you and I will have no problems with our 10 to 20 lot trades, but we're not going to see any, we're not going to see any big money in the market today. The only folks that are in the market today are people who are unaware of the situation or people who have no choice. You'll put yourselves in some of the traders shoes out there that may not have got their job done or maybe padding their monthly numbers or may have certain things they must do today before their boss tears their head off and fires them, right? Or on the other side, they may simply be blissfully unaware, right? That's another scenario. So there's two types of traders, people who have to be here today and people who have no idea why they shouldn't be here today, okay? Keep that in mind, right? The old Warren, the old Warren Buffett quote, I love to play cricket, but I will only play cricket with a professional. Don't invite me to play cricket with a rookie, right? Because you're liable to get your head taken off. And that's exactly the scenario we want to remember today. As we trade, as we trade any of these quad witching weeks, we have to remember that right now you're playing polo with a bunch of rookies. And you better keep your head on a swivel because you're going to get taken off if you're not careful. The daily chart tells us we should see rising prices. But at the same time, we know that if we can get below the 95.43, we are looking. Hold on one second. Hold on one second here. Nope, that is a typo. 95, 9459, 9459. That's the level. 9459, excuse me. 9459. The line in the sand at 9459 this morning. We can get below that, guys. This thing is going to rain down to 92 even. 9554 is the spot at the top of the zone, and we are looking for buying opportunities above it. Be very, very careful, though, forcing those longs this morning because we know at any moment this thing can collapse. Let's zoom in a little bit closer now. Look at this four-hour chart. The four-hour chart says, okay, now we got a little bit more information here, Joe. This is a lot more encouraging. Now we can see what's going on. Now, this, there's three things that stand out to me on this chart. The first thing clearly is the bullish channel. The bull channel tells us, Joe, we know. The high percentage trades tell us to buy the lows of the channel. So I'm at the lows of the channel. I'm sitting on top of the symmetrical buy zone. And now we know 95.35, 94.43, this buy zone here is going to be, it could be our best friend and our worst enemy this morning. The second thing I see is that since we are resting in this buy zone, I am going to be looking for rising prices today. The only problem is, is that we have a sell zone immediately overhead. This is what tells me that price could easily roll over and move lower this morning. Now, again, you're going to hear me continue to say it's quadruple witching. This is no joke. Very difficult for me to anticipate long term this morning. So while the technicals may scream at us to get long this morning, we have no idea who is really in the market. And Remember, whenever we find ourselves confused or concerned or lacking confidence, we need to trust our own intuition on this and need to trade very lightly 
or be very patient for the extreme high percentage trades this morning. Remember, this is not your average Friday morning. So we know that we're bouncing out of this buy zone. Prices should rise this morning. I will be looking to buy pullbacks. However, if we see those buyers are a little bit, uh, if they're a little bit light in the volume, if we're not seeing the follow through that we're used to seeing every morning, the third thing that I see, the third clue, first clue was the bull channel, buying. Second clue was, eh, we may not get it to go that far, right? Third clue, third thing I see, we've still got room to drop. And I think that's probably what's likely to happen today. There is definitely a bearish feeling in the market here after that Fed day on Wednesday. There's definitely some concerns over, this, over, over these prices. So again, look for, those, look for those buying opportunities here. But if we don't see them working, be, beware. This has still room to go. We could easily see this heading all the way through to 93, 94. And remember, it's going to be sloppy. So you're probably going to see it make a little fake out breakout and then come right back up in, right? So look for that late morning, early afternoon trading opportunity. Again, guys, it's quad witching. So anything can happen. I'm looking to buy the lows of this channel. So if price takes off to the upside, I am buying pullbacks. However, if I don't see that price making good progress to the upside, I'm going to have to wait, let it get a little bit lower, right? I'm not sure about selling short, though, into that, into that low. I definitely would be very, very careful trying to sell short into this in, into the lows of this channel. All right, now the four-hour chart segues now into our 60-minute chart. Let's now take a look at the 60-minute chart. We'll come back to that one in just a moment. Where'd that 60-minute go? There it is. Over to my 60-minute chart now, and the 60-minute gives us even more bad news. We know we're at the lows of a channel. We know we're at the lows here now resting on support. We're resting, bounced off the 95 even. If I zoom all the way out, I can see here this big wide channel here on the 60-minute chart. And you can see we're about two-thirds of the way to the lows of the wider channel. So we still have room to go lower. And, and again, that was one of the things we saw on the four-hour chart. Knowing it's quad witching Friday, knowing that we have some inconsistencies we're going to expect, we now look at the at the hourly chart, and boy, there's a lot of information here, most of it telling us a short-term pullback, but longer-term, right, moving higher. As you can see, we've moved all the way now down to that 95 even, and we've bounced. We've bounced directly into our sell zone here now. This sell zone, as you can see, 95.46 to 95.93, this sell zone is exactly why I'm expecting price will want to pull back, I will look to buy that 95.24, and when I do, I'll be using targets at 95.86, targets at 96.56, and if I can leave a runner on it, that 97.49, that's the ultimate runner target here today. I don't think we're going to get there, but again, we know that these, these hourly charts are very, very consistent as far as multi-day moves, so look for that 97.49 right going into early next week. So we know what our levels look like now. We know that, yes, Joe, it's going to be a little bit challenging to be buying right now. We're right inside of a sell zone on a 60-minute chart. Probably don't want to do that. So we're going to wait for price to pull back 95.24. We're going to look to get long up to 95.86. A nice, easy first target at 86. We'll hold the second target up to 96.56, and we're off of the races today. Okay, That's going to be the high percentage trade. Now, if price happens to blow right through that 95.24, not to worry. We've got plenty more price reversal locations waiting for us below. And as you can see, at this time, we're making our way there as we speak. Last chart here this morning before I toss it over to New York, Marty Erico and the NYMEX Exchange. Here we have our five-minute VIP. And the five-minute VIP chart shows us, look at the narrow trading range we literally have a 45 cent trading range coming out of overnight trading. That's a very, very narrow range. We know that a very narrow range almost always means indecision. Indecision meaning the sellers do not have confidence to be selling. The buyers do not have confidence to be buying for whatever reason it is. We know that on quadruple witching days, there are often times of low volume. That's the reason why it's such a low, uh, uh, small trading range this morning. So this narrow trading range should not be a surprise. And we know that we have that buy zone sitting there below us. So what I'm going to do on this is looking at the levels as we go lower. As we go lower this morning, as, I've, as I always say, I am not going to try to be the first person to sell short. 
I'll let some other poor trader do that. I will wait for price to bounce off the reversal zone. When it bounces, I will buy. I'll wait for price to bounce off the daily buy zone. This is that buy zone we found on that 60-minute chart, 95.24, 95.09. If your job is to be patient to wait for the best trading opportunities this morning, that's exactly where it's going to show up, 95.24 to 95.09. Again, I'm not looking for, for a prediction on this. I'm looking to see if at that time, and if the market personality looks right for the taking, and we see the reversal, I'm going to buy it. Pretty simple. Okay, I'm not going to predict it. I'm not going to put a resting limit order there. I'm not going to chase after it. I'm going to wait for the entry pattern once we leave that buy zone, and I'm going to buy it long. And again, I'm going to use those 60-minute levels, those 60-minute levels, right? Remember, we talked about that just a few moments ago. Those are my profit targets. Okay, we have levels below me here this morning at 95.29, 95.24, 95.09. We've got 94.98. I have a trend line resting here. Don't forget about that trend line. That trend line will be an important trend line. We don't know when it will be tested. It may be tested later on this morning, right? So be aware of the trend line. I have 94.71 and 94.70. As we go lower, we have the previous low of day, 94.63, a huge reversal level at the previous low of day. Guys, we love to trade those previous high of day and previous low of day levels. Use them right? Use them. So as we go lower, again, we are expecting long-term, we are expecting long-term rising prices, but I think we're going to have short-term falling prices this morning before we get into position where we can start buying. As we go higher, these numbers can now be adjusted. I'll adjust these levels for you on the blog this morning when I put the chart up. We will be able to adjust those levels overhead. Overhead, though, I have immediate easy resistance levels here now at 95.84, and take a look. There's nothing else here. 95.84, 95.96, 96.11, 96.27, and then all the way up at 96.54. 96.54, if you remember, was also a level we identified on that 60-minute chart, so keep that in mind as well. These make for excellent profit targets. Again, as we move higher, I will look to sell that reversal zone, okay, if we get a reversal out of it. I will also look, of course, if we break through it, reversal at 96.11, reversal at 96.27, and again, the, the aggressive traders out there, you are welcome to buy pullbacks above these and go with that new trend. I'm just somebody who thinks that it's a lot easier to wait for price to get where it's going, wait for it to collapse, and it's so much easier to get into that trade. Just my humble opinion. You're more than welcome to trade however you want. Uh, we will be able to, though, buy pullbacks above that 95.86, but sometimes it's difficult to tell when this market personality is ready to break out or fake out break out, right? You probably know what I'm talking about. All righty. That's what the chart's telling me. The chart's telling me we've got to push a little bit lower this morning before we can feel confident getting into the buy. But I want to hear what Marty has to say. You know, Marty's taking a completely different look at, the, at, this, at this market we call the black gold, right, crude oil futures. Marty, what are you seeing over there, my man? Am I, am I crazy here this morning? Are you as concerned about quad witching as well? What are you looking at at the pit right now? And I'm sorry, Marty, we're, we're having some sound problems on your end, Marty. We, we, we have no sound on you. There we go. That's better. Okay. There you go. Good morning, JJ. So, There's my boy. As I was saying, quite thin, <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, very small trading range. Absolutely, man. Very small trading range in the overnight session. Only a whopping 30 ticks. So, yes, quad witching is a very big concern to me um, throughout today and even into this morning, again, uh, this day, morning, overnight session, very thin, not a lot of activity. You can see the, you can see the chart, obviously, here. Look at this little 30 cent trading range here throughout the uh, overnight session. Okay, so 95.25, very important level here. I agree with JJ in terms of just if we open below that, we can get down to 95 even. If we open up above 90, 94, uh, 95.25, 
we could see a little bit of a higher price. So let me just show you guys just some uh, some pit charts here, pit session levels. So you can see the 95.25, right? It's a uh, low of the overnight session. So if we open below it, we can get down to the 95 even, even possibly uh, 94 half. But really looking to stay focused in this range right now. We do have some uh, fib retracements here that, that we were looking at earlier. Uh, bearish channel, of course, as well. Okay, so you can see the range from yesterday. So you go high to low on the range from yesterday and you get your resistance zone that we want to keep an eye on up here at the 96, even 96 quarter. But most likely what we're trying to look for is just an open around this 96 to 25 level. Below it will be bearish down to 95 even. Above it we can be uh, bullish up to 96 even. All right, so this morning what is brought to us right at the moment? So we have what's brought to us right now and we can see crude trading a little bit higher in a sideways range, of course. So I'm calling it sideways trade on all four of the majors. That's Brent, Arbob, Heating Oil, and Crude. So Arbob this morning, uh, or Brent really this morning, trading at about 102.50 uh, right now. It is higher on the day by about 40 cents or so, but still very low here on the uh, volume side of things in a very tight range in the overnight session. So Brent trades around 102.43, 102 102.40, uh, 102.42.5. Uh, looking at Arbob this morning, a little bit higher, trading around the big round number of uh, 279 half, and heating oil trading around the big round number of 289 even. So, really choppy type trade across the board with not a lot of uh, conviction at all. Volatility comes up as the big rally, uh, as the big sell off comes into play yesterday. So, vol is very bit here in the pit. We did see all of our other internals like gamma and delta kind of start to skew a little bit lower interest in some 95 evens uh, strike levels again uh, a lot of locals getting crushed again you have to keep in mind into expiration well they really don't get crushed because they get out of their positions in time they're out they were obviously short the um, short the put and they were long the call so they're selling puts and they're buying calls and and and, and they were long till about 99 even right and then they come into expiration yesterday was the expiry of the July contract and they come into options expiration and they start selling off all the positions and that's why we start to see this little this huge downtick to the downside so locals don't get too crushed again they're out of their positions but they do take some longs in the Augie contract so you can see now we're trading down to 95 even and I think 95 even can hold as some decent uh, support. If it's not going to be held, then we're going to see 91 bucks pretty quickly, 90, $93 at least really quickly. All righty. So as we were just mentioning, we were looking at our multiple market divergence. We looked at crude oil, Bob, heating oil, and Brent. They're all telling a sideways range at the moment. These markets tend to follow each other, and right now they're not going anywhere for them to follow each other too. So all of our spreads are Brent WTI spread around 7 bucks unchanged on the day. All of our other counter spreads are unchanged on the day as well. So you should really say unched and not sideways. As we take a look at volatility, as I mentioned, we're quite bit in vol right now, which is supportive of these lower prices. 25% uh, in vol is about the key of just to bring us to 25, uh, 95 even. So you can see 25% volatility, 95 even. Spreads are sideways, giving us a sideways type sentiment. So honestly, I say we trade within range from yesterday. Buy those 95 evens, sell those 96 halves. So that's basically what I got here in just terms of what we're going to be looking for in crude. Uh, again, watch the volatility, watch the internals. I think it's going to be gamma scalper galore today. We're going to see a lot of offers out in volatility. Gamma will be bid. Locals will, will be able to cover their daily their daily theta and we'll probably just sit around break even for the most part of the day. If we do get a breakout, we have to test these big round number levels. We have to test below 94. Uh, 95 even to get down to 94. We got to test above 96 even to get above the 96.25 and trade up, up to the high at 96 half. So if we are going to get a breakout, we need to test these levels and I'll give you guys the levels in just a second. So levels here for you on crude. We're looking at yesterday's pit session high 96.55. Your low down at 95.04, 95 even we can call it. Okay, so we close and settle the day quite near low prints at 95.09, right? We settled near the lows. Implied volatility pumps up to about 25% right now in the chart. We ended up settling yesterday 24%. The OVX, the cash volatility index, settles the day at 25.90. So you can see we're up significantly in volatility. Again, volatility was heavily bought yesterday. 
Let's continue on and take a look here now at your open interest this morning. Actually, open interest currently stands at 291,219. That's about 20,000 contracts higher from yesterday, which is actually bearish. But of course, we could look for the retrace. Again, always we always look at uh, big down days. JJ, we just mentioned big down days, and what, what what do we see in return to big down days? Usually, a halfway back. So we could see possibly halfway back, and that halfway back is around that 95 and a uh, sorry, 96 and a quarter, 96 even a 96 quarter. So that could be our halfway back. But open interest is higher today. Bottom line, it's bearish. If volatility continues to rise, that's bearish as well. So yesterday's range is about a dollar sixty wide. We end up settling down dollar fifty five yesterday in the pit session. So the high, as I mentioned, ninety six fifty five, low ninety five oh four. Daily pivot today. 95.23, resistance above at 95.42, 96.23, that's a very important level, 96.23. If we can break above that, then we do have a lot of uh, activity to the upside up to 98.33. So again, remember that 96.25, 96.23 level is very important as it is one of our levels that we were watching yesterday. All right, guys, 93, 90. One is support down below. 93.68 is support down below, and support as well. 92.13. All right, guys, let's rock and roll over to natural gas. The natural gas we had an inventory. Inventory numbers were kind of mixed yesterday. It gave us that kind of mixed chop trade. We ended up kind of getting a little bit of a build by about uh, two BCFs higher, and it gave us a mixed reaction. Again, we traded lower to it, the number told us lower to sideways type trade, and that's what we got: lower to sideways chop trade. Natural gas can continue to trade within range, and I think that we can also see possibly a retest at 375 again. Um, all traders are buying 375s as we are expecting warmer than expected temperatures all around the country into next week on the 6 to 10 day forecast. So that variable right there, besides looking technically at the market, the weather is really going to move natural gas. So Baker Hughes rig counts come out today as well. We're going to be watching that. Alrighty, guys, so levels here in your natural gas we have for you yesterday. 395.10 was your high. Your low was 383.5. We ended up closing and selling the day at 387.90, which was uh, down about about um, fifth, one and a half pennies on the day. We had about a, a 12, yeah, about 12 cent trading range yesterday, so that was quite large. All right, you guys, daily pivot 388.80. Resistance above, I have 383.5, 395.20, and 4020. Support down below, I have four, uh, 382 half, I have 379 60 and 375 half, and that's going to be our buy zone right there, guys. That 375 half is going to be a big buy zone here in natural gas. So they have been treating that $4 level as um, some upside resistance, and that 375 is some downside uh, support. So we will continue to keep an eye on those two markets and those two levels. So in the natural gas, you can see yesterday's bearish type activity here in the natty gas uh, to the inventory number, but it overall is mixed, almost unchanged. You can see we're only down a penny and a half, as I mentioned on the pit session, but overall wide trading range. So we could come in and we could buy that 375 as we roll into next week. Uh, again, that 375 down here, so we would have to break below our uh, channel, our range low and get something going to the downside. So we will be watching a, t a potential test at 375 into the rollover because we are going to be rolling. We're right now in July. We're going to be rolling over to the um, Augie next week. So as I was mentioning here, that 96.23 uh, level that we have to break above, right? Look at that. It's the tie into this little uh, 61.8% re retracement. So if we break above that, we can get up to those 98s and 97s. So very important level to keep an eye on this today. As to even if we excuse me, make it above there, so just, uh, so just so you guys know. All right, you guys, so that's about it for me. I'm going to throw it back over to JJ. I'll see you guys here in just about 50, 45 minutes or so. Got to get some stuff ready for today, so I will see you all then. Thank you so much, Marty. As always, great to have you here with us. Always a pleasure to have that, uh, in, in my opinion, a very, a very important look at crude oil and, of course, natural gas. Um, want to thank you all for listening in this week. Marty, thanks for being here. You too, guys. Thanks for being here. As always, my name is Joseph James. I'm JJ at School of Trade. That was Marty Erico. He's Marty at Traders Audio. Don't forget to check out uh, my live trade room over at School of Trade. And don't forget to listen in to, to Marty and his partner, Jeffrey, over at Traders Audio. They start at 8.50 a.m. each morning, and they're broadcasting live from the NYMEX floor. 
don't forget to come out and see us again in the future, okay? We're going to take the weekend off so you can sleep in this weekend, and we'll catch you back here on Monday morning at 7.30 a.m. Now, don't forget, Monday is Rebalancing Monday. What do you mean, Rebalancing Monday? Well, you'll have to come out and see us on Monday morning, and we'll tell you all about how to trade Rebalancing Monday. That's the Monday where traders come back to their desks. Yeah, you're right, and they do exactly the opposite of what they've done this week. This week, they're getting out of positions. Monday morning, they're getting back in. It's going to be an exciting Monday morning prep. Hear your crude oil squawk. We went from the screen all the way to the floor this morning. Don't forget, you can find a copy of today's recording on our YouTube page. You can read all the charts and all the commentary on our blog and just email us for any more information. Guys, as always, thank you so much for coming out and joining us this week. Thank you for your feedback. Don't forget to post your comments on the blog. Don't forget to send us your feedback. Is there something that you would love to see us cover? Is there something that you can't stand about what, I, what I'm doing? I'd love to hear the good, the bad, and the ugly guys. So don't hold anything back. We'd love to hear your feedback. We want to make this broadcast better every single week. Thanks so much once again from Marty Erico. My name is Joseph James. We'll see you guys on Monday. Have a, have a fantastic summertime weekend. And don't forget, guys, you got to learn this stuff so you can earn with this stuff. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.